Well, that's good, everybody. Guess who's got good stuff? It's an orange kamikaze this time. Let me check that one up there a little more, though. Because I know that's not going to come out cold. I have two in here. So it'll be nice. I can take two shots right in between. Made with the good old Deep Eddie's Vodka. Going right back to that whole thing. Figured since I already made it, I don't have to go over again. I can just go ahead and show it right on off to you guys. There you go. Cheerios. Oh. Let's get back into action. All right, no, you click that to go. <laughs> I was like, wait, why isn't it going? Duh, you idiot. Rise and shine. Oh, good morning. It's 11 a.m. though. That's morning for me on the weekends and any other day. How's everything outside? It's still noisy, but forces have been deployed to take care of most of them at least. How so? The Zaibatsu Corps president is pleading with anyone to stop the rogue white knights. Neighboring city forces were deployed quickly and astute in most of the opposition. There have also been reports of white knights just freezing, like they were petrified somehow. They were hacked. You make it sound like some god suddenly decided to put everything into place. Mm. Well, I'm just glad no bullets are flying in and out from the whole building. Sure, there's still some bad apples out. It's not really safe yet, but it was way worse last night. There also seems to be a civilian force lynching. Any white knight they spot. Okay, never mind. I thought they were lynching the civilians. Like, what? Okay, never mind. So not only are the white knights a problem, regular folks are on edge too. I'm gonna say it's okay. Okay, with as much as we're worrying about her, I'm legitimately starting to get worried about her. Should we be worried about Gil? That kid knows how to take care of himself. I'm sh- Oh, damn it. No, no, no. Go away. Go away. I didn't mean to bring you up. Um, I'm sure that whatever it is that he's doing, he's safe. Is he participating in this? Dare I say even safer wherever he is than here. I sure hope so. Are we gonna work today? Nah, things are too nasty right now. Let's take the Sunday off. Oh, all right. Say, do you want me to help you get to your apartment? Actually, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Okay then, let me lock things up and we'll go. We'll grab something for lunch on the way. Sounds good. And here we are. Wow, this is so much different. Wow. <laughs> Just think, if I just got a little further in the game, I could have seen something cool like this. I'm sure this would have dragged me in a little bit more. But no, impatient blackjack. We'll take another shot of that one. Ooh. Home sweet home. Thanks a lot. Hey, boss. Wanna hang out for a bit? Hmm? Yeah, grab a beer. Chill out for a bit. Mostly to thank you for helping me. I had beers in my fridge. Um, I should have probably gotten a beer for this episode, but instead I got more vodka. Well, I don't have much to do anyway, so yeah, sure. I should stir that up a little bit. I just tasted soda. I did tell you you should. I did tell you you should invite me to your apartment sometime, didn't I? Oh yeah, you did. What worries me a bit is that beer always leads to something else. Beer? To more beer? I was gonna say to one of us going through the Spanish announcer's table. Oh, but okay, that's actually, okay, that would actually be more accurate. Okay, I was like, where is this going? To one of us going through the Spanish announcer's table. But I think we're safe here. Come on in then. Excuse me? Want one? Sorry, I don't smoke. Don't mind me though. Smoke if you wanna. That's pretty much my rule on smoking. Thanks. Say, how is the chilly weather treating you? It gets cold from time to time, but nothing the uh, Kotatsu in the heater can't fix. She was right! It is a Kotatsu. She fucking called that. Well, there we go. All right. All right, boss. Um, you're not very good with the cold, are you? You know it. You didn't bring your jacket here either. Yeah, I left it at home when uh, when going to the bar yesterday. It wasn't that cold, and I didn't expect to spend the night at the bar. Would you like a sweater or something? 
Oh, don't mind me. I insist. I, I had this hoodie from some time ago, and it was too big for me. Why buy it, then? It was dirt cheap. Right. Wait, wh where did you get this, then? Uh, wh wait, wh wh where did you get this one? I don't know, some flea market ago ages ago? Why? Nothing. It's just like what I had many years ago. What happened to it? Too much use. It just ripped. I see. You can keep it if you want. I never use it anyway. Um, we'll see. Come to think of it, how old are you, boss? I'm eternally 17. Oh, fuck you. Don't you bring that number back up. Fair enough. 17 plus how much? 17 plus, I'd have to cut your tongue if you knew. All right. Let me change it to something more comfortable. Take your time. Wow, <laughs> four. Look at him in his close-up. See, Jill, there's a blue-eyed mass of black fur gla uh, glaring in my general direction. Hmm. Oh, that's just four. He's just wary of any new visitors. Cats will be cats, I guess. He'll warm up quickly, though. Just give him time. He's unusual looking. Blue eyes on a black cat? They usually have green. Green or yellow, I've noticed. Yeah, weird, huh? At first I thought they were like that because he was small, but they never changed. Do you have any pets, boss? Back at home we had a bear. Uh, I see. W what? Good old Bosco. Of course it's Bosco the bear. He kept intruders away better than any dog. R right. Hmm? This picture here isn't something you see every day. Oh, it's Jill with friends. Look at Jill, she's all cross out like, huh? I saw weird things happening here, and her friends are like, ah! ah. What? Uh, me taking such a sappy pic? No, a framed picture on printed paper. It's so vintage. Honestly, it's so crazy. Like, you can kind of tell what house you're in, or like the age of the people in that house, based on whether or not they have framed pictures of like, themselves not of art of themselves like family portraits that they put on the wall that is like the sign of someone who is in their 40s to 50s or older because millennials don't do this i have not been in a millennial household once where it's like, yeah, we just frame, or frame like photographs on the wall. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm saying it's gonna be way more frequent with an older crowd. I'm thinking right now of pictures I have hung on the wall and zero of them are of like family or like friends or even doing anything like that. Cause guess what? We have the internet. I can just go through the internet and do all that stuff. Who are, who are these? That's, um, the one on the right is Lenore, my ex-girlfriend. The one on the left is, is Gabrielle, her sister. Aw, Jill had a girlfriend once. That's so adorable. I wonder how it ended. Oh, wait. Didn't she tell us how it ended once? Huh. This is pick recenter? Or... Actually, that's from three or four years ago. No, it can't be this one that she's talking about. She talked about that. Because that one was like a year ago when she was talking to Alma, if I'm not mistaken. You look exactly the same. Honestly, she kind of does. Other than the eyes. The eyes are really the only thing that's different, but she's kind of taken by surprise there. I'm only 27. What did you expect? That's why, that's why they say kids are the ones that get old. I thought it was recent because you don't usually see people displaying pictures of their exes so openly. That very rarely happens. Let alone a printed and framed one. Did you two break up on good terms then? You even hesitated a bit calling her your ex. Let's just say that everything in it with both of us saying mean things. And me storming out of her house, breaking a couple of things on the way out. We never broke up formally and I guess I still have feelings for her. I just went away. I haven't said a word since. Really? It's hard to it's hard to picture you doing a, such a thing. And you look so happy in the pic. 
Why have her pick out like this then? I just can't get off my mind. I get my mind off something that Alma said to me. About missing having the warp of someone else press to get your side. Using them as a pillow, mixing your perfume, perfume with theirs. Okay, the perfume thing I don't care about. Putting your head in their chest, listening to their breathing as they pet your head. Dozing off knowing they're there, watching you, protecting you. I don't know, I felt nostalgic, then miserable. Jill is hitting me a little too hard right now. I'll just put this away. I'll just put this away. I didn't mean to apologize, but I feel like it's too late now. Whenever I go out, there's this fear in the back of my head that I'll meet her in the street. I just don't know if I could face her again. Let alone talk to her. We're gonna run into her again. I'd be a mess. It's never too late to apologize, Jill. Maybe. Hmm? What's that on the table? Hmm? Looks like an envelope. It's nothing. Nothing! Now please give that to me. Lope. Alright. I saw nothing. Don't worry. Anyway, let's grab some beers. Guide me. Damn, you have lots of beer. Oh, shit. Wait. Damn it, I just want, I want to save real quick. That's what I wanted to do. Um, well, the BTC gives me discounts and a point card I can use every time I buy their alcohol. Yeah, just keep drinking. <laughs> that beer is actually the cheapest drink I can get. Is there any difference between the drinks at the bar and these? The drinks at the bar are more addictive, flavorful, and also stronger than the one they sell in stores. Also, I mix them. Get drunk, Jill. You're not ready for this conversation. I don't think so. Spark out 15 of 11, Kira Ma. Wait, what? I don't know what that means. Oh, does that mean spark, shine, and it was supposed to be on November 15th? Oh, sp no, shine, spark is her album, and it was out November 15th. That's what it is. And besides, the one in the bar is more of a double IPA. This one is more of a pilsner. D drink, then. Mm, drink. No, if it's a pilsner, drink, 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 drink. Open another one. Bang. That's a Pilsner, let's go. Pound the Pilsners. In English, please. This one's lighter in color and lighter in flavor. Pilsners are actually, I'm not gonna lie. Skip your Butt Light, your Miller Light, your, I don't know, whatever else, McUltra, Natty Light, whatever you want. Skip all that shit. If you actually get a Pilsner from like a microbrewery, um, a gastro pub, wherever it may be. A good Pilsner is actually very nice and enjoyable to have. Um, there is a company here, uh, sorry, a brewery here in North Carolina, White Street, which makes White Street Kolsch. It's technically a Kolsch, but whatever. Um, but it's a nice, light, enjoyable beer. Like, it's, I love a good, light beer. It's perfect for summer. I'm dying for, I, I should actually just get some white street. That's what I should do. Drink up, Jill. Don't know. It doesn't taste like it. Uh, like a lighter, uh, lighter to me. <laughs> this one made with that. Um, what was the name of that base liquid you used at the bar again? What? Nutriogenic dico, sorry, dichometrical glycogenol or NDL. It was a supplement or something, right? It was an experimental fluid they used to uh, re re replace water when the maiden kiss polluted uh, water supplies. Drink. <laughs> the effects of pollution turned out to be temporary, so NDL never went into mass production. But the BTC still, st BTC still commissioned it for use in bars. And is this one made with it? Let's see. Yep, here it is. Near the end, NDL and cards, cornstarch. Oh, 
cornstarch? I feel like I have to drink with Jill. Um, it serves as a stabilizer, if I remember correctly. They need it for packaged drinks. I see, and I just realized something. That's actually funny, because I think Bud Light recently, uh, sorry, it's been like doing a campaign where they're like, their beer isn't made from cornstarch. I can't remember if it's Bud, I think it is Bud Light. I don't think it's Miller Light. I think Bud Light is the one that's doing it. It's like, no cornstarch in our beer. I, I kind of want to look it up, but I'm not sure. Um, I see, and I just realized something. That I'm drinking a lot. What? You're a nerd, Jill. And that's why I love her. Guilty as charged. I still have that bottle of rum somewhere around. Do you want some, uh, some of it? It's crazy because... So what tends to happen is that a lot of female protagonists get labeled as Mary Sue's. Um, and while Jill is relatable, she's actually a pretty bold protagonist for the most part. There's nothing really Mary Sue about her other than the relatability-ness of, of her. Um, she's actually probably one of the more intriguing protagonists I've ever played along with. Um, and I'm glad, because Jill is a very, very interesting character. Can't say the same for guys like uh, uh, um, Makoto over Danganronpa. He's not interesting at all. Do you want some of it? Drink. 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 We have some too? Drink. Open. Your answer is yes. Not really, no. Damn it! Then leave it like that. I'm not letting you drink beer alone. That's not how drinking with friends work. Yes! Do you consider me a friend then, boss? Why wouldn't I? Dunno. What with being my boss and all, I was never too sure. Well, in case you had any doubts, yes, I consider you one of my best friends. Don't look at her home screen! <laughs> Besides, you and Gil are our response. Uh, sorry, are always so diligent and responsible that I'm boss in name only anyway. That's good to know. On a side note, it surprises me that you kept that poster of me in your room. Oh shit, that's... And even more of it, you hung it in plain sight. When I gave it to you, it was more, uh, more or less a joke, you know. Does it make you uncomfortable? No. Start drinking, start drinking, start drinking now. If it doesn't make you uncomfortable, why would it make me uncomfortable? It's my own face! I'm still wondering why you did it, though. Aside from filling an empty spot on the wall? I don't really know. I thought it was funny, too. Drink. That's depression. Um, I guess it's like if someone gave you... I don't know. Drink. That's depression. A doodle-shaped trophy or something, and you had it there as a conversation starter. Drink. That was a terrible thing to say. Open. <laughs> Although no one comes here anyway, so it's kind of pointless. Drink. Keep drinking. <laughs> what? No steamy nights of passion? That is also where me and Jill sadly relate. That does not happen often. A lot. It, it, it hasn't happened, the, uh, again, it, it's very weird. I've been playing this in, like, the last time I played this was, like, 2017, and I gave the same answer. It's been about eight or nine months. <laughs> not since a year ago, I think. And I'd rather not talk about when that happened. Did someone hurt you? Because if they did, I can go dish out the pain. No, nothing of the sort. A different kind of mess. Drink. Drink. Uncomfortable mess. A not being able to have sex for reasons mess. Uh, drink. drink. You know what, actually. I'm glad to know you have my back, though. That's what friends are for. Wait, you talk about the poster and compare it to having a dildo shaped trophy? We're opening a new beer to tackle that one. Did you just call me Dildo Face? That's what friends are for. Mm. Hey Jill, where did you get that black four ball? 
Well, as with any black cat or house cat in general, he's actually a stray. I found him in the alleys near the building, not long after I moved here, I think. Ah, I see. It was quite the sight, though. He was uh, cornered by all these dogs, but they were keeping their distance. He was holding his ground, hissing and scratching as much as he could. There was a fried chicken bucket nearby that had some rain and water in it, so I threw the water over the dogs. They ran, and I figured the cat's mom would be nearby, so I left. Then I noticed people looking in my direction as I walked. Turns out the little shit started following me. So you brought it home. At first I wanted to see if I could find him at home, but... Having him welcome me whenever I came back was just too much for my heart, so he ended up saying... It was destiny, girl! When he came home, he was so cute, though. Not like that the fat mass that's sleeping on the table. Hey, you're not a spring chicken yourself, you know. Drink, my cat can talk. <laughs> <laughs> shit, I actually did that. Shit, I actually did that in front of someone else. Oh, ho, ho. anyway. Don't anyway me. Do you normally speak for your cat like that? Maybe. I wonder if Gil's alright. You worry about you worried about him? You worried about him? You make it sound like I'm some emotionalist robot. Drink. You can be hard to read. Drink. Open. I wouldn't worry about Gil so much, though. The, there's three things I know for certain about him. First, he can take care of himself. Second, you can sincerely trust him. And third, he absolutely hates bell pepper. <laughs> He does? I've seen him even reject food that ha uh, that has been in contact with it. Man, what a baby. Unless he's allergic or something. He's not. Man, what a baby. <laughs> How did you meet such a guy? He showed up in the door of the bar. He what? Well, it was shortly after the whole incident with Robert and the levitation potion. Right, levitation potion. Drink. <laughs> It was a slow day, and he just showed up at the bar. I offered him a drink, but he said he wouldn't have any. Uh, he, w he didn't have any money on him. I couldn't leave him alone, so I pretty much gave the drinks for free. And after a couple, he broke down crying. Drink. He, huh? I don't know what he did, but he was really, really regretting it. He wanted a second chance or whatever, and I told him if he could wash himself up, I'd find him a job. Uh, wash himself, uh, uh, I'll, and I'll be damned, he looked totally different the next day. Damn. I tried and failed to find out anything about him. So I decided to take him at face value. I judge him from what he did as an employee. And aside from the occasional sudden escapade, he's been as loyal as loyal gets. I return the favor in kind, covering his ass from time to time, sometimes literally. What surprises me is oh, sorry, what surprises me is that you took him in so easily. I can take care of myself and I always keep an eye on him. And besides, after the whole Robert thing, I couldn't ignore someone that de uh, that desperate so easily. I see. You've made the bar more lively yourself, you know. How so? Well, with the regulars you've earned, of course. Like that blonde titty hacker. <laughs> I can't remember her name. Alma. <laughs> it took me a second. I was like, wait, what is her name? Alma? I was going to say Armitage. <laughs> Armitage. Drink. Open. Well, she's hot. I'll give her that much. Ooh, Jill turned red. She's also a nice person in general, but... Damn, she's hot. Are you alright, Jill? Yeah, why? It's weird to see you say something, uh, uh, see you say so openly that someone's hot. Drink! <laughs> what? Even you can see she has a hot body, boss. You'll 
find no ejections here. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about taking her to her room and... Drink! Drink! Drink faster! Drink! 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 This isn't helping! I know it's not helping, but just... For the love of God, just drink! Please! For just... just down that shit! Jill, you sure you aren't drunk? I am. I mean... I'm sure I'm not. I mean... <clears throat> but those are thoughts I'd leave to myself. I don't think I could handle her in a relationship. No, you couldn't! She has weird standards. That and she's as straight as straight gets. That is very true. She's never mentioned being with the girl. She's messed with you about being with you, but she's been pretty straight for the most part. She's still a lovely person, though. Now that she's become a reg, uh, now that she became a regular is a blessing. Any regular is a blessing when you get down to it. Okay, so I'm guessing Jill is just straight up lesbian then. That's interesting. I was not expecting that one. I was thinking maybe bi, but is she? Uh, no, Jill is straight up lesbian. Um, there's also that sex worker robot girl. Ah, uh, Dorothy. Actually, you know what the sign should have been? The sign should have been best boss in the heart. It, it should have been like clear as day there. But for some reason, I was just kind of like, mm, no, I'm, I'm going to give some leeway. No, clear as day. She intrigues me, though. I've seen lots of sex workers over the years, and she seems pretty giddy. It's not that she likes her job, but rather that she takes it, uh, takes to it with such childish uh, excitement. I've kind of noticed that too, but then again, Lilim can be weird. You think? Lilim operates some really foreign logic. I mean, they don't really share a fear of mortality. Even if their bodies are destroyed, their minds are already backed up in their collective source. In the collective source. If they lose an arm, they can retach it or replace it. Depending on the circumstances, they might not even feel pain at all. It's not like they haven't attained human-like emotions like fear or love, but they are... different. Like a different culture, if you must. Hmm. I didn't see it that way. Aside from that, Dorothy is DFC 72. It's a social interactions model or something you drink. Lilum get positive reinforcement straight from their bodies if they're fulfilling if they're fulfilling their per main purpose. So I'm guessing she gets a built-in push whenever she is me uh, when she when she's in a meaningful or challenging social interaction. Interesting. The name Lilum is a bit weird though. Yeah, it is. It, it is. You'd expect them to be called bots or dolls, but Lilum doesn't convey the image or automa uh, automaton, uh, image of automatons. Just a tip, bots and dolls are considered slurs by them. It's 2070 whenever I could see that one. That one I could actually say. Bot is akin to calling them retarded, and doll is like calling them fake. Thanks for the advice. That aside, do you know, do you know why they're called Lilum? Dana is just not drinking. She's not drinking at all. As far as I know, because they all come from a bigger AI called Lilith. And Lilum are Lilith's offspring in Jewish folk folklore. Ooh, cool. Drink. Hey, speaking of names, why don't you why don't you like uh, being called by your full name? Oh, we're finally getting to the Julianne mystery. I have no idea what you're talking about. Never mind. Don't act stupid. Back when you first transferred, I called you Julianne, and you almost tore me a new one with your glare. Mm. Drink! See? Like that. <laughs> it's no big secret, but it's one of those things that feels silly when you say it out loud. Try me. Drink! Well, did you ever watch Model Warrior Julianne? Not all of it, but my little sister's a big fan of the reruns. Back when I was in elementary school, I was a huge fan of the show. I had everything, from the dolls, to the costumes, to the lunchboxes. It didn't help that it was one of the shows that got strapped literally everywhere. I saw a couple of episodes once, they were really nice. It was beyond nice. The show's about a model who can transform into an armor-clad magic knight. She fights demons born from greed and vanity. Drink. 
I might stop there on drinking. I have a show presented Jules hitting her job because it invited enemies. And yet still found solace in trying to be a role model. Hell, the main character wasn't a kid. Julianne was an adult that became younger when transformed. I'd say it was a pretty ambitious kid's show. Even by today's standards. Just the fact that her enemies were literally issues dealing with beauty standards and body image. Challenging as fuck. Whoa, you got excited there! And that's the problem. Back then I was obsessed with jewels. I sang the songs, dressed like her. I would even recite full chapters. Something tells me you still can. Speaking of, opening one. Ahem. <clears throat> That's beside the point. It was nice while I was in elementary school, but then I went to uh, but then I went to middle school. And what a surprise, tweens are jackasses. They went out of their way to tease me about the things I did back then. I don't hold it against jewels. I hold against I uh, sorry, I, I always hold my grudge against those fuck jobs. Sounds rough. You know how most girls worry about their thighs at that age? I've heard. I worry about jerk asses singing the theme tune of the show mocking me. Anyway, every time someone calls me Julianne or Jules, I instinctively react negatively. I... I can actually relate to that one. Pavlov would be proud of me. I never talk about it because I find the whole thing too silly in retrospect. Drink. And yet it affects you even today. There's nothing wrong with it, though. Drink. It's actually kind of reasonable. I sure hope so. Come to think of it, what kind of kid were you, boss? When I was a toddler, I was the kind to always fight with kids bigger than me. Then puberty happened, and I became the Merriam-Webster definition of shallow jerkwad. Around the time I was 16, I realized what an idiot I was and was on to become uh, become who I am today. And the less I talk about those tw years from 12 to 15, the better. Fair enough. Say, boss, how do you like the men? 2D. <laughs> it's actually funny. 2D. Yes, I don't mind anything as long as the, as long as that thing is cute or 2D. How about you? Um, she doesn't like men. Back in high school, I liked them funny. In college, I liked them successful. After a while, I just wanted them stable. And now... And now? I don't know. Oh, wait. Okay, so maybe there is bi? Or maybe she's finding out she really just likes men. I uh, sorry, really likes women. Jesus Christ, what is wrong with me? Um, okay. So it's a little all over the place. I mean, for some people, that's how discovery kind of happens. So that's interesting. I stopped caring about them being funny. My high school boyfriend started conflating, cheering me up with mocking me when I'm down. That's the, um... It's so weird because I never know with these kind of things. But that's the, um... There's the you pick on someone that you really like thing. Um, yeah, no, that's exactly what that is. But in this case, they're picking at things that actually, like, they, they're affected by it. I also stopped caring about them being successful. I realized half the time they had no qualms about cheating with me or on me. And I stopped caring about them being stable. I realized they were the kind of person I was trying not to become. Not become stable? There was this guy who became so obsessed with holding a stable job that he hated. He started being physically ill. Not only that, the last time I managed to get some, I ended up throwing the guy out. Drink! Um, he took incredible offense with how I smoked on the bed after sex. I wouldn't care. That's, that's a total non-issue. Um, the bed could catch fire, you know? Not you two. I kind of envy Alma for that. 
At least when she dumps a guy, it's for less petty reasons. Are you okay? I'm fine, it's just... It all boils down to the fact that I can't get my mind off Lenore lately. I mean, to be fair, it wouldn't necessarily be the issue isn't that she's smoking. It would just be more like, I would maybe say, hey, if you want to have a smoke, go outside real quick. That's it. It's not the smoking that's the problem. It's such a weird thing. And also, if... I, I also don't know in that situation if she's at his place or if he's at her place. It's it's completely different. I don't know. She was... She was all of what I just said. She made me laugh. She had a good position and was stable. She was also smart, caring, and... Why can't I get my mind off the whole thing? Drink... It's probably not helping. It's it's maddening. Maybe I should go and apologize. Maybe I should. Maybe that will make me rest easier at night. Get my mind off things for a while. I can't guarantee that. You gotta find out that answer for yourself, Jill. I don't even care about going back to her, but but ah. Hey, Jill, have you tried thinking about clothes for four? I, I, okay, Dana, I feel you on that one. Clothes for... <laughs> Listen, I know how you must feel, but you can't let all that cloud your senses. Next time you feel overwhelmed by those thoughts, try distracting yourself. Like, let's say, thinking what kinds of clothes you put on four. You can put on four. Yeah. You know, boss, I'm a bit curious about your circle of friends. What kind of people do you have in it? Keep in mind, you're included in this circle, too, so any insults you hurl her will apply right back to you. Anyways, I have this friend I've known for a long time. A red-headed, glasses-wearing gut nun... I'm sorry, gun nut called I... Sorry, no. I... I... I cross... I crossed my games for a second. I was like, Iris, no, wait, what? And I was like, oh, wait, no, that's Arcade Spirits. Never mind. The one you call for the helmet thing? That one. She's managing a BTC bar in pa uh, Panama right now, if I remember correctly. She's managing a bar, too? I got the idea from her, actually. Oh. It's called Nirvana. Nerve and oh my god, Sukabon Games in 2020 is gonna make a game called Nirvana, which I talked about in the first episode. I didn't realize they actually referenced it in this game. I'm so mad now I didn't play this two years earlier. I'd say just played all the way through two years earlier. If you thought that city was dangerous, if you thought this city was dangerous, you should see the people she has to deal with there. Piracy ain't nothing to fuck with. And, but it's an annex to another business. What else does she does there? Uh, what else does she do there? I think the bar was originally her hotel's bar. She moved the bar from uh, to its own building elsewhere and opened up Nirvana B in the hotel instead. I guess it'd be ner uh, Nerve on B. Weird decision. At least she said she wanted a place away from the noisy rich tourists in the, uh, that go to that hotel. So that bar is her active woman cave. Alright, we're opening another one. Drink. Woman cave. Bad aside, let's see. Friends. Friends. I guess there's also my little sister, but that's a given. Oh, there's also my old partner from when I, uh, from when I was with the Neo San Francisco Police Force. The what? Sorry, no. Rewind. Good old Lexi. Should give her a call sometime. Wait, you were in the what? I've done lots of things, Jill. I spent a short time collaborating with the police force. I've been a wrestler, an MMA fighter, chimney cleaner, lumberjack, pet shop attendant, corporate mascot. She's starting to sound like me. That's not good. Corporate... what? I still see my face on some websites from time to time. Drink. Anyways, aside from you, Gil, my sister, Iris, and Lexi... Hmm... I guess there's a lot of people that don't want to see me in harm's way. 
Mostly because they're the ones that want to hurt me. What about you? I guess I have acquaintance, acquaintances here and there. Back at home in college, I went out a lot. But it felt more like going out was the pleasure rather than the people involved. Aside from you and Gil, my closest friend since moving here is all mom. Oh, and Dorothy. I mean, sure, there's always four, but that cat's a hermit that refuses to go out. And you know, he's a cat. Hey, a cat's fine too, you know? Okay, boss, I have to know. Okay, boss, I have to know. About what? About your arm! I'd rather not talk about it. Come on, I want to know how you got it! Fine! Yes? I had to use a couple favors to get it. I accepted no less than state-of-the-art tech. That's how I got it. That's technically you're correct, but come on, I'm drunk as fuck on beer. Why do you want to know how I got it? I just want to know more about you. You're always so cool and awesome and oh boy. Can you at least tell me if it does something cool? It does have a couple of the utilities installed, yeah. There's an ACD in the forearm, I used to save a sort of data. It has a flashlight and a clock, but mo many prosthetics arms uh, have, these, have those nowadays. Kind of like watches. How did you feel when you lost it? To be honest, I was sad, but I was also satisfied. Yeah, I lost my dominant arm, but its sacrifice uh, helped a bigger purpose. If I had to lose another limb to accomplish such a thing, I'd totally do it. But of course I just hope it doesn't come to that ever again. Now you're just teasing me. You hear nothing else from me, young lady. Damn, I didn't even finish my beer. Alright, what's happening here? Is it snowing? Snow rain? Hail! That was chapter one? What? Chapter two, Armaga? I never realized that I only got through one chap. I was still in the first chapter of this whole time. Oh no! Your electricity bill will be sent out on the 24th. Please make sure you have $8,000. Okay, I'm at $2686.50. Jill was curious about a Daruma she saw. Getting one will prevent you from getting too distracted. Have a nice day. Oh my god. Okay, next time we. What? That conversation was so fucking dope on the rooftop, but damn, man. I've only gotten through chat.